Uh, this little device that I've got here is an M5 stack remote uh, switch, switched plug. So the beauty of that thing is you can program it. What I'm thinking is programming it to have it watch the status of a hotspot by checking the API once an hour or once every two or three hours and rebooting the hotspot if necessary. Cool. I just thought someone might find that interesting. Cool. Yeah, it's their new uh, called M5 Stack Socket, I think is what they're calling it. It's like $28. <laughs> comes with a, it comes with an M5 uh, Atom Light. Interesting. That's a single socket there? Uh, no, it's two. It's got oh. a one without a ground and one with a ground. Gotcha. What's on the bottom? Is that, Adam, a USB-C? Uh -huh. Is there something else on the bottom? The black? Uh, yeah, there's a, a power ah. cord. You just plug the... Gotcha. That's, that's pretty it's... slick. I've got some of those little uh, units. The... Uh, I forget the name, but you can flash a different firmware onto them. They run an ESP8266 and you can use them. A lot of people reprogram them. Um, it allows you to have Alexa um, integration or, or uh, Google Voice integration um, and, you know, use them with like a home assistant. Uh, what would be cool on that is if you used Wi-Fi Connect where you can configure the whole thing over for like a, a captive portal, you know, that sets up on Wi-Fi and then you configure it, it flips it around and then just uh, can feed you logs back um, just over a, you know, micro web server that it's running. Interesting. Huh. Um, what I really wish, man, are those, if those kilowatts were easily um, interfaced, or at least the ones I have aren't, they're pretty... Um, Pretty just dumb push the button and you know have a display but that now wouldn't be cool does, to be able to this does have the same kind of uh, capability too you can monitor uh the you know the the flow and all that kind of stuff it's got apparently a fairly low-end energy monitor chip built in it that's really cool thanks for sharing that it was a new product on uh the m5stack.com site I think they're sold out of them already for this, for this first batch, but. Yeah, I've, um, I haven't played around with the M5s a whole lot. Um, I've got one of the older screens. I think the new ones have touch screens and I have one of the LoRa, one of the GPS, and then the face plate keyboard units, but. They've updated their uh, LoRa and their um... GPS one because they were not compatible to work on the same. You couldn't plug them both in. Yeah, you had to reroute your GP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, the new ones are switchable. I've I've got the new ones. I just haven't started playing with them yet. Gotcha. Um, there's also um, a plan on GitHub where you can 3D print. You know the sled. There's all sorts of M5 stuff on Thingiverse, but uh, there's one where you can make a, a LoRa sled. sled using uh, RFM 95. Yeah, for this particular project, one of the guys and one of the patrons I know has got, he said he's got about 20 that keep going up and down. That They're having to call and having to manually reboot their hosted hotspots. So I was gonna make it to where it would just go out and like once an hour check and see if the hotspot was showing is offline. And if it is, turn it off for five minutes and turn it back on. Does yeah. this, the does this device check whether the hotspot's online or does it ask the cloud? It, it would ask the cloud. Okay, cool. I mean, like I said, it's monitoring the power, but it doesn't have LoRaWAN built in. So it can't really, you know, ping the hotspot directly. But it could check and see if the power was down, but then it's, I guess, kind of a moot point, right? If the power's down, it doesn't make sense to turn the power off. <laughs> but hitting the hitting that API at least it'll tell you if it if the if the helium network thinks it's online as long as it's got Wi-Fi. So being part of the M5 ecosystem, I mean, is this? I mean, I know it's not stackable, but um, how does something like this fit in with Atoms? Um, the Atom is kind of cool. Um, it has 
see it just it's just a little plug module mm -hmm. um it has standard pinouts on the back for the gpios okay uh, and then it has the um uh, in the front there's also a i don't know what to call it uh anyway there's a a groove connector yeah a groovy groove connector yeah. And then there's a second groove connector on the base model. So you can plug in, you know, sensors and other stuff into that. Yeah. Interesting. Now they just need a, a groove module for LoRaWAN. Oh, they've got them. Oh, do they? Yeah. Um, but all it is really, it's an RFM 95 um, board with a few, what a, a Oh, actually, no. You know what? Um, the rest of that board converts it into a serial interface. It's a serial interfaced uh, LoRa board, and I think they're only selling 433 megahertz on those right now. I could be incorrect. I could be wrong, there, but I think that's I think that's right. Yeah, it seems everyone has a number of those Grove connectors in a drawer around somewhere. Oh. <laughs> I, I thought it was things. kind of cool. This is, it's got a little, it's a 10 amp relay in it. So it'll switch a pretty serious load. Yeah. It's kind of overkill for a helium hotspot at five watts, but. Yeah, I, I posted the link. You were correct that they're sold out. 2290. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for telling us about that. That's, uh, those are neat. I mean, like I said, it's not exactly helium, but it's kind of helium adjacent. I hadn't looked at any prototyping development stuff out there in a while. So seeing this N5 stack is really cool. I didn't even know these things existed. So thank you. And they got some cool stuff. I mean, like, like he was saying, here's the little. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, that's kind of a neat little device considering it's got its own battery built in and all that kind of stuff. They got uh, e-ink? Yeah, they have an e-ink one too. Um, Excellent. I've got it on order from DigiKey, but it, it, they keep pushing it back. It's, they're saying now like the end of May, I think. Mm -hmm. DigiKey distributes them. That's great. Yep. DigiKey is the U.S. distributor for M5. Where are they from? Where's M5 from? Um, UK, Japan or China. I don't remember which. Mm. They're one of their primary distributors is Banggood. What's neat about those core modules, um, if you look at the sides, they have pretty much every pin on them broken out. And they come they come apart. And it's that ESP chipset, right? Yeah. It's like a big boy Arduino. The really cool thing is here. I'm going to present just real quick, if you don't mind. Not at all. The cool thing about this is it's programmable by their own blocky, or one of the ways is through this blocky interface. So if you're looking at it, this is my, this is actually the thing that's calling that. I've got a set switch mode. It turns, you know, it sets pin zero high. It turns the light to red. And that basically is generating Python on the back end on how to control it. So I've got it hitting my, you know, the, the actual script is hitting the helium version one hotspots with my hotspot name and then i'm parsing the responses back in here or trying to haven't quite got there yet but it's kind of neat if you're just wanting to play with something to be able to control it it's kind of a neat way to do it yeah i haven't done much visual programming but this is nice because it, it has the python code there you can kind of check against or uh that's really cool thank you And so that allows you to um, transfer in both ways or translate between the blocky and the Python? Uh, no, it's one way. You can't, you can, 
if you switch to Python mode, it turns off the blocky mode. Gotcha. But it does give you a, a good working, you know, you can throw some of the blocky stuff in there and build kind of your base. And then it'll, you can take that and turn around and lo load it down as normal Python. Uh, the kind of the cool thing about here, one more real quick thing. Sorry, guys. I know I'm rattling. No, I love it. This thing is kind of neat in that it also has a remote capability. So you can drag these things onto your, onto your panel here, and then it will generate a QR code that you can hit from any, from the web that will let you enter these values into a web page that's basically being served off of the, off of Blocky. So, you know, you were talking about being able to remotely control or change the parameters. You yep. could actually build your, your config screen to be able to update on your phone using this. Very cool. Um, how much are just those uh, base chips? Under what six that? bucks. Oh, wow. And a USB-C with Wi-Fi and an ESP32. Yep. That's the, that's the light, the one with just the one bulb. Then they have the Matrix, which has a, a, a five by five color LED for the, instead of the button. So the whole front of it is a, is an LED, uh, LED array. And I think it's nine ninety five. Well, uh, keep us um, in the loop on how that project uh, shakes out. I think that's something that uh, you know a lot of people would definitely see interest in. Uh, that's neat, man. No problem. <laughs>